face and start kicking ass, just like it said at the beginning of the program. Man of the hour, tower of power, too sweet to sour. Sending your ass on the jabroni jet to the other side of the territory, brother. The Alabama Hammer. Nightmares on the best part of my day. The goods from the wood. Hot damn. Welcome to the Goods from the Woods. My name is Rivers Langley. I'm Sam Harder. And I'm Carter Glasscock. And today we got ourselves a good old three-man jam. That's right. Just the boys. No parents. <laughs> just the boys. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Mom and dad skipped town. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> about to raid the pantry. <laughs> mm, yum, yummy. What was the thing that you went for when your parents were like gone, like as far as pantry goes? Oh, man. Do you have any memories attached to that? Many. Uh... <laughs> I would uh, uh, so when when it wouldn't even be when my my parents were gone physically when they when they were checked out like when they were like asleep oh yeah yeah like yeah. my dad would sleep Ooh. in the living room <laughs> and he would just have like Showtime just blasting oh wow and yeah. the late night real sex late, and yeah, shit yeah Hell it would be yeah, so dude. funny because uh, you know he was watching some like Civil War documentary or some shit before <laughs> that. And he passed out like maybe 30 minutes into that. And then now it's just like real sex, like I'm a hooker or something like <laughs> Wait, that. Were there civil war, <laughs> civil war documentaries airing on Showtime I, at the time? I don't, I don't know, but I know he loves <laughs> historical stuff. He was and, watching Gods and Generals with uh, Robert Duvall and Jeff oh, Daniels. The probably. Patriot. The Patriot. The, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He'd be watching like sh- shit like that. And then, uh, or he'd be watching some historical movie or something. And then he would go, uh, <laughs> uh, which is what you guys described, sorry. Yeah. And uh, he, so he'd pass out. And then me and my friends would get uh, <laughs> just higher than just owl tits. Uh, <laughs> and we would go sneak upstairs. And my mom would buy these things that were coffee st- like stirs. They were like these pastries that were like little crispy oh, sticks. Oh, yeah. I with remember cream those. In them. Yeah, they were like an ice cream cone almost. Like yeah. that, that, kind of, that kind of thing. We used to call them angel cum sticks. <laughs> 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 and my friends would always tease me saying that <laughs> Why? like... Well, they'd say that I was going to get caught, and then my dad was going to wake up, and he's like, that's no star crunches for a week for you, bud. <laughs> Mine was when I was young, because you mentioned getting high. This is this, I was just thinking, like, you know, when you're whatever, like 10, 11, I would fuck up some peanut butter. Oh, like, yes. I would just get a spoon and just fucking eat, like, giant gobs of peanut butter, and then at mm-hmm. some point, I figured out that the combination, and I haven't done this in a long time, because it's one of those things that I know in my brain is delicious, mm-hmm. but is so fucking awful for you, uh, get uh, one scoop of peanut butter and then an equally large scoop of ice cream, put them Ooh. in the same bowl. Yeah. That sounds that sounds fucking great. Oh, Oh, Buddy. the best. People don't know about that? I mean, I don't know. I don't <laughs> I know mean, if people just, figured that out or not. Just a fucking glob of each. <laughs> they and disgusting. Maybe, yeah, just a a, a, a handful <laughs> of each. And then maybe like some graham crackies. <laughs> Which flavor ice cream? Uh, oh, I mean, my, my mom usually got the light Rocky Road, oh. which is so funny that they had. Do they still have light ice cream? Is anyone yeah. still dwelling under yeah, this illusion? They do. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. It's called like Slim Cow. Or oh, skin- yeah. The, yeah, the yeah. Halo, skinny Cow. Halo. Yeah. Halo. Uh, yeah. Skinny Cow. Skinny Cow. <laughs> Which if is you... a whole nother. <laughs> yeah. Let's not even get into that today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You need a whole, you know, two whole quarts of Skinny Cow. <laughs> you lose weight. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it'd be a Kroger brand light. Rocky Road mm. uh, ice cream was the was the general, the general go-to. Although, if left to my own devices... Oh man, I fucked with moose tracks all day long. Yeah. I mean, I, I I went up there with reckless abandon. Like I would take like, <laughs> you know, like like a t- grilled chicken that was made that night. Not even bother reheating it. Like standing there in my underwear, remove the, the saran wrap and just eat it by hand. Yeah, yeah. I would do. Uh, yeah, I was crazy. Hey, that, that ain't nothing but a good old party there, man. I'll tell you, I was I like, hate how everything you guys are both saying, I do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, you've 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 been uh, turned loose from from your parents' uh, watchful yeah. eyes. You know, we're for, uh, we can do whatever <laughs> we want for a decade. <laughs> but you're both looking up like, man, can you believe I used to do this? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, believe me, I, I want to do all of these things most I, of the time. I've, I've been, eaten four sandwiches today. <laughs> They're like from a restaurant sandwiches. Yeah, they're good as hell too. What what, what kind of sandwiches are we talking about here? They have uh, 
turkey, avocado, mm. some sort of spread of some kind. Ooh, I wow. want to say some sort of like cilantro mayonnaise and uh, jalapenos. Shit. Dude, I changed. Yeah, you got to bring those over the here. The Tijuana turkey <laughs> from... Tijuana turkey. Yeah, wow. that's got one of those terrible names. But <laughs> there's there's a restaurant out here that's where these uh, sandwiches are from. And the restaurant is called Lemonade. And this is just what a fat ass I am. Sam was like, oh, yeah, we got these uh, lemonade sandwiches. And for a brief second, I was trying to put together my head like... That sounds delicious. What's a lemonade sandwich? Like yeah. I started from that sounds great, and then tried to figure out like how would you make a lemonade into a sandwich? You know, <laughs> like if, you know what? We, I'm down for it though. If we weren't in the current foodie era we're in now, <laughs> a lemonade sandwich sounds like you took someone's perfectly good sandwich and pissed on it. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. So it's like one of those things, like a soggy waffle. Or, yeah, 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 a like, limp biscuit, if you will. <laughs> like a, like a football team would do it to you if yeah. you're the new guy. How'd you enjoy that lemonade sandwich? You fucking Rookie, <laughs> you'd just be like, I didn't eat it. It was wet. <laughs> What's wrong with the fart? In my oh, what's the matter? Too good for the lemonade sandwich? <laughs> Too good for you to wet sandwich, you pussy. <laughs> That's probably how that restaurant got that name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The guy was picked. Mr. Lemonade was picked yeah, on too he's much. He's eaten enough piss sandwiches in his life to know the difference between a peed on sandwich and a good sandwich. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think I, I, I guess in my head I was thinking like one of them like lemon flavored cookies, but just mm-hmm, huge. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, like maybe get two big ass lemon cookies, right. with some ice cream in the middle. There's your lemonade sandwich, right? Yeah, <laughs> like it's oh. a sandwich only in the sense that I'm it's... gonna leave, fellas. That sounds too good. Yeah, you were yeah, so geez. proud of that idea. <laughs> see you guys now. later. I mean, I, I don't think I'm gonna top it. that. <laughs> I could see you making it. Oh, this yeah. is why it's good that it's just the boys. We can't. We can't. <laughs> throw around Somebody ideas like this up. with someone else here <laughs> you know they'd all be like ah, i've got you know I'm, i've got another thing to promote or whatever i want to talk about <laughs> calvin and Hobbes. <laughs> <laughs> bill watterson when i was growing he truly was uh. <laughs> no we want to talk about peed on cookie sandwiches <laughs> <laughs> the real issues yeah i was yeah. eating one when sam came in here today <laughs> yeah i was i thought about eating it late last night i I'm thought it to... was tuna and then he turns <laughs> he turns around and he's like, this is an ice cream sandwich. Like, he felt the need to admit it. Like, I was a police officer getting him to confess to a crime. Well, it's the middle of the day. It would have made more sense that I was eating a tuna sandwich and having a little late night treat in the middle of the day. <laughs> a late night treat? Yeah. <laughs> it, is there, it is fully 440 in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Is there times you're allowed to eat ice cream sandwiches? Yeah. you're supposed. Uh, to, it's the, the same time when you're supposed to jack off in the middle of the night. Which is, <laughs> that's it's true. 10 p.m. PM. That's right. <laughs> and what order? Uh, well, first of all, <laughs> the time, the time for ice cream and the time for jerking off oh, six, you, is a perfect yeah, circle you, of a Venn diagram. Well, you you jerk you. off, you feel all ashamed, and then after that, you're like, mm, "What would make me feel better?" <laughs> and you go, "Ice cream." Ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> What if, oh, what if there was a really popular ice cream shop in L.A. called Ice Queen? <laughs> <laughs> K- then, it, then it would be really popular. K-W-E-E-M. It's ice Queen. Like, you couldn't say it without sounding like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> they make you say yeah. it correctly. <laughs> yeah. They have really, order. Re- yeah, they have really good sustainable choices at Ice Queen. <laughs> Just old OG Latino guys. <laughs> you old fool, you want to go to Ice Queen? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, they load up a pickup truck, baby. We going to Ice Queen. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what, I got fucking robbed out by the goddamn parking lot of Ice Queen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a business, it's a plan. Well, you've been wa- what's the what's the hip hop show you've been watching? Oh man, I've been watching Rhythm and Flow. <laughs> What, what, just explain to people what rhythm and flow is in case they don't know. So yeah, rhythm and flow, <laughs> unless you've been living under a rock, is on... Which I have. You yeah, have never been. Never heard of it. <laughs> oh, God. Guys. Guys. <laughs> it's on Netflix, and it's a hip-hop competition. Wow. So, it's like American Idol for rap. Okay. Oh. And, and the hosts are T.I. and Cardi B and Chance the Rapper. And okay. that's some names, man. Yeah, I mean, it's not like it's not nothing. Like they didn't get like Young MC and fucking like yeah. Snow and fucking uh, you know they got like, actual people on the charts and like yeah. acknowledged hip hop legends. Well, yeah, you watch The Voice and it's like you know Kelly Clarkson had the she yeah had, like, she had a good song or whatever. But, but yeah, come like on. Debbie Gibson or some shit. Yeah, yeah. they got some <laughs> current on current, the chart on yeah. the charts rapper. Yeah. Cur- yeah, which is yeah, which is like you know and like you'd think that like Cardi B's gonna be like the one that's going to like 
the drop and all like the memeable stuff. Yeah, and she kind of is, but she's like she gives like a like pretty sa- solid advice. Uh huh. She's like, I your stage presence leaves a lot to be desired, but your lyrical flow is really good. <laughs> Guacamole dip. <laughs> and she just like says like some little non sequitur at the end that she knows is gonna get like talked about. And th- but Chance the rapper, he gives solid advice too, but he like it critiques some of these weird things. Like there's this one guy who makes this video and it's all about being Christian. And then in one shot of the video that like it the the image g- like flips upside down and he like harps on it. He's like, yeah, I didn't like that uh, that one image is a uh, upside down cross because that's demonic and this industry is going to try and change you. It's like that's not fucking <laughs> advice. You know what I mean? Like that's wait, the that's, industry's going to try to change you as in like they made this video to make you the you know the yeah. a, a satanist or something. Yeah, he's just like so obsessed with being married and a Christian that like it's. I mean, it's fine. It's <laughs> yeah. whatever. But like, he's like critiquing other people on their like entire approach. Yeah, based on his hangups. It's like, oh, you're and, not, you're not me, and I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't appreciate it. Like, it, it, it gives me some like vibes of like a like a dismissive southern parent or something oh, you know sure. what i mean it's like well i mean if that's what you want to do you got them satanic <laughs> stuff and that's okay but i mean just i, yeah. I think you're good He's i just passive you know. aggressive southern mom yeah, yeah passive yeah. aggressive <laughs> passive aggressive southern mom that's well, a tongue twister say I that one see that times, he's like that because he's forever gonna be the one good album guy it's acid rap right yeah he made that and it looks like it's never happening again i liked coloring color book. coloring books okay no. that's uh, well to be fair that's the only one i've listened to i've never yeah. listened to acid rap oh acid rap yeah never heard acid rap i hear it's great that's it's what it says yeah 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 those, those are the two that i have i haven't i haven't heard the new one <laughs> the those, new one's supposed to be trash but i haven't listened yeah to it's either. all about just like i'm really happy because i'm married <laughs> right? yeah Sit around and watch Netflix. Yeah, it's all tying with Netflix and just being like a homebody. <laughs> yeah, maybe he is that that kind of that kind of rapper. I mean, Ti is like Ti is like a guy who has a lot of hits. Yeah, you know? like yeah, King's yeah. maybe the best album, but he's had just like consistent. Yeah, he's bigger or smaller hits since like two thousand five or so, two thousand four. <laughs> yeah, like he'd be like a, a rapper that have like a great like best of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, seeing him live would be good because he's uh, featured on a bunch of songs and yeah. he has a bunch of hit songs of his own. I mean, King is the shit. I, lo- I listened to that album this year and it uh-huh. fucking rules. Yeah, he's a great rapper. He got some great producing. Mm-hmm. I like a lot of his music. I yeah. Used, I used to hate him. Really? He had beef with Lil Flip. Oh, mm. boy. Where's Lil Flip at nowadays? He's still out. <laughs> he's still around. Flip. <laughs> the only thing I remember a little flip is uh, my uh, friend is not even has anything to do with him. It's just my uh, my friend's older uh, brother had a dog that he named Flip after mm-hmm. little flip. Did he have big floppy ears? Like oh, it was flips? a ba- it was like a little uh, kind of basset hound mutt. Oh. It was really it was real cute. And he had a club foot. <laughs> so he didn't walk so good. Oh, yeah. Great. Little flip and Petey Pablo are out fucking hitting up the <laughs> fucking circuit. Well, Petey Pablo at least made a song. That could be made into like a state anthem. You yeah, know? it's still a fucking thing. Yeah. Oh, dude, oh, yeah, North that, Carolina. Yeah, take your shirt off and spin it around your head like a motherfucking helicopter. Yeah, dude, that's and, the best. And I, then they did the the nine eleven remix that we've talked about on here before. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> America, take your shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even hate him for that. He, he no, he knew that like that was going to be the hit. And yeah, he yeah. just leaned into it. We had Freak a Leak too. That was yeah. Cool. He had another good song, Freak a Leak. Yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> Petey Pablo was great. I'm sure he's just a, a king in North Carolina. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Would you think he's, he's like their Dre? He's Texas's Scarface. <laughs> oh yeah, Can- yeah. Canada's Drake. Yeah. Memphis's yeah. Project Pat. <laughs> Is that a fair assumption, or is it Juicy J? You think is more popular project? I mean, I would. I'd say three six is the one I associate with Memphis, but yeah, yeah. But you got to pick one. If we're going with one artist, then yeah, sure. Oh yeah, no, three six is a group. They're allowed to represent. That's true, and it's just DJ Paul and Juicy J. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And then they signed fucking uh, Project Pat and everybody who is good in Memphis. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, murderers and robbers by project. This is going down a rabbit hole. Of rap albums, <laughs> and OG Angel Dust. Check out that album. Little White. <laughs> Little White. Oh man, I've never listened to Little White. I'm album. getting fucked up, man. I'm getting <laughs> fucked up. It's the song that's playing when Kenny Powers is shooting steroids into his ass and he's right. pounding down. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's uh, one of the very few rap songs that features the harpsichord, which I like. Uh, yeah. Not featured nearly enough. <laughs> I know. It's like, come on, are we not all allowed to? 
sample Johann Sebastian Bach. I'm getting fucked up, man. I'm getting fucked up. I'm getting fucked up. Speaking of rap, I, uh, there's a, a Christian rapper named uh, Brian Trejo uh, last night walked out of the new Adams Family movie in disgust. Not a Nick Kroll fan. Well, right? this headline is so. <laughs> it, this may be the biggest publicity stunt he could think of to pull off. Yo, so we took the kids, right? To watch Adams Family. <laughs> Growing up, we watched Adam's Family, and it was, it was like what? It was like, you know, like costume-type comedy, right? Well, let me tell you something. The Adam's Family right here, they had the voice of a demon, like, <laughs> growling, right? <laughs> like, okay. They're creepy and Second, they're spooky! The little boy in the cartoon started crawling little up the boy. wall. Possessed with, the, with his eyes. His eyes were possessed and everything. Crawling up the wall. <laughs> Like Let me tell you strike three, though. Uh-oh. <laughs> strike three is when they pulled out the Ouija board. Oh, no. When they pulled out the Ouija board, me and Monica looked at each other and said, nah, we can't watch this. That's demonic. <laughs> yeah. God bless him. But eight, the enemy knows what he does when he sneaks stuff into the movies, especially as a, a, as a form of cartoon. Anyway. It's the yeah. dumbest shit. Do they shit. celebrate Halloween? I mean, I don't know. First of People all. People like this always do. They're creepy and they're kooky. Mysterious yeah. and spooky. They're yeah. all together oopky. Uh, the Adam's family. What did you think? What did yeah. you think you were getting into? It had a deep voice. It had a, like oh, that, that takes like what can you see now? Like you can't yeah. see like any Marvel movie. You can't see Star Wars. <laughs> it's demonic, dude. Y- yeah. I love the the Ouija board was the the straw that the broke Ouija the camel's board. back. Oh, that is the most hackney. That's so hack for like a super yeah. like Christian. Oh <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, super yeah. Super Christians hate that. They hate Ouija boards. Yeah. yeah. That's very, it's true as fuck. Well, you know, Ouija boards are the, uh, the you know. funniest scam ever. <laughs> yeah. That only dumb people <clears throat> believe have any power. Is <laughs> <laughs> is truly like the, like the last bastion of like reefer madness <laughs> hysteria. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like, uh, I figured we would just uh, give a little listen to, uh, to uh, some, to. Of, gotcha. some of Brian Trejo's uh, music here. This is uh, Seen Me at My Worst by Brian Trejo. <laughs> See if my worst <laughs> walking out of Adam's family. <laughs> Demonic cartoon business. They had a Ouija board. <laughs> Do you understand why we left children? <laughs> Time to go home and sleep at 7 30. <laughs> <laughs> they made a growling noise, just like a demon does. Like a demon doggy do. Is he gonna rap or is he just singing? He might just be a singer. So no, it's the video is called Christian Rap. Okay. Not the best day started off a deadbeat. Prison mentality while trying to make my ends meet. Such a hit to the point I was sick of it. Yeah, it's like There's this, so much ignorance, Jesus. This, Help me get rid of this. I wasted so much time chasing things that were not of you. I was bad and now I'm good. Yeah, I blew someone's brains out. Now the Adams family is demonic. Ain't no more busting twin. Quit using your trigger finger. Ain't no cigar. And now he's walking out of the Adams family movie. Yeah. It's funny because he's still rapping about gangsta shit, but he's just like, I'm with the Lord now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Trigger finger. Yeah. Trigger finger used to thumb through the Bible. <laughs> Find yeah. your favorite verse. I, does anyone here have any desire to see the new Adams Family movie? Absolutely no, not at all. Not. And, and I don't Why? I don't want this to mean like seem like I'm promoting the Adams Family yeah. movie. Yeah. You know, and it, it is <laughs> demonic in that way. <laughs> it's, but I mean it just looks like it sucks. It just looks like a cash in, but it looks yeah. like a child's movie. Yeah, yeah it's a it's, but not the good kind that has any redeeming value <laughs> where you where you're crying at the end. Yeah, there's no hugging Pixar your going kid here. and going, Thank God I had a family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's one to like put this shit on a Burger King cup and be yeah. like fucking like Uncle Fester, he puts a light bulb in his mouth. <laughs> like do that same joke they've been doing for like fifty fucking years. <laughs> yeah. To a bunch of new kids. Although that's a good joke. It is a good one. Do you, know? you, do you guys remember the Uncle Fester? It wasn't a game necessarily. It was like it was in arcades, though. It was like this endurance test. Oh, and the, you would hold the two metal things, and they would just shake real. Hard. Yeah, they would shake so vigorously that it felt like you were being shocked. Yeah, where you just had to like grab on, and it was like like it would just yeah. zap know, you. People I know, I know like, people who that's given them epilepsy. <laughs> 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 oh, wait, like forever? Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, oh, oh I was gonna say. I mean, hey, man, I'm ready I, to buy it. I remember kids being scared to do it because it actually because they thought they were getting shocked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
It's uh, yeah, like like there was real danger involved. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, yeah. Hey, you never know when you're at uh, <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese or Dave and Buster's, yeah. or... and your parents are drunk and they've left you alone. Yeah. There's some guy, in a... <laughs> there's some guy walking around in a trench coat. That's a different thing. Grab, man. grab these two things. Grab them. <laughs> <laughs> Grab these two metal things, boys. It is funny how everything with like child interactive <laughs> games and stuff sells booze. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just know there's some alcoholic parents who there's no way they would take their kids anywhere <laughs> without <laughs> booze. <laughs> Except for mine, Aladdin's Castle. It was just in the mall. No, Aladdin's Castle. Oh, yeah, they had one of those in my mall, too. But yeah. it's like you can't serve beer in the mall. Oh, yeah, no, in, like, for sure. Certain parts of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that, Aladdin's Castle had a BYOB policy. Cool if I drink in here. <laughs> Excuse me. They have a pinball arcade in Austin called Pinballs with a Z. Oh, yeah. Pinballs. And they have a, they had a BYOB policy. And uh-huh. I think they still do, but now there's a sign that says you can only bring in two beers because people are going in there and just getting <laughs> fucking like blackout drunk. Yeah. So like, you just shotgun two on the way in and then bring two to sip on. Yeah, yeah. there's a five dollar uncorking fee to have an animatronic mouse like yeah. uncork your bottle of wine or some shit. <laughs> I'm gonna like, fucking blackout. <laughs> Play that's Terminator Dave... Two pinball. Yeah, that's how Dave and Buster's like advertises it too. It's yeah. like. Get... Fucked up and played Dance Dance Revolution. Well, the funny thing about that is like pinball is like a fairly difficult game. Oh, yeah. sober. Yeah. <laughs> pinball? Easy. Uh, yeah. Well. Depen- depending on the table, they're a lot yeah. different. It's a game of skill. It's kind of hard to get like sh- truly shit faced and play pinball as opposed to like getting truly shit faced and doing that that game where you just punch the thing as hard as you can. And maybe it's because I discount it because I suck at it, but I've always looked at pinball as like a game of chance. <laughs> not, not at all. <laughs> not at all. I'm just like, I don't know. What are you talking about? You flip, you flip the flippies when the ball what? comes near the it's the bottom. A, it's the just flippies. You know, the little flippies at the flippers uh, at the bottom. The, 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 that's not and it a, does a bunch of whiz bangity hoobity boobity not shit. A game of chance but at it's all. A, <laughs> that's the thing. They make it fun even for dummies like right, this. Right. Like, <laughs> that doesn't make it's, it a game it's of chance. It's making noise and there's lights flashing. So <laughs> yeah. this is a and then, yeah, you hit more like, money. Like, in. You hit the war pole and then you get 10,000 points. I don't know. You get just... three balls at once. <laughs> yeah, you get three yeah. balls at once. I don't uh, know. As soon as I put money in, I'm like, I've immediately made a mistake. That's fair. I mean, I'm also not good at it, but I do recognize that, like, you gotta, you know, there's a whole fucking Who album about it. It's a game. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a, that, it's a game of skill. There was, in Nashville, there was a bar that opened up. It was a pinball bar. Uh huh. And I went to it, and boy, that ran out of steam real quick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know if it's still open, but like, going there, I was just like, after about 30 minutes, I was like, I'm done. Like I, I'm, I, you know, <laughs> Doctor Who, Playboy, yeah. and Jurassic Park have kicked my ass. Yeah, but one is a Phantom Menace theme. Like I don't care. <laughs> maybe I'm stu- Maybe I need to just <laughs> really focus. It's how you release the ball, and you got to anticipate it coming down near the thing. The, the I don't angles, man. The angle, and you got don't tilt it. Don't tilt it. Uh, no, What's your favorite arcade game? Me? Non-pinball. Oh, uh, is, it can be like a video game too, right? Or you mean like an actual like arcade yeah, game? Either or okay. whatever. <laughs> okay. Well, I would say uh, 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 ski ball. Yeah. Oh yeah, there you go. Ski ball. Yeah, ski ball is fun. And uh, and then video game wise, uh, Mortal Kombat. Because it's all bloody. Yeah. When I was a kid, I was like, this is like the goriest thing that's ever been made. <laughs> Blood is awesome. Blood is so awesome. Like, that's what it would really be like. <laughs> uh, yeah. If, if you uppercutted some guy into some spikes on the ceiling, <laughs> yeah. if a, he would explode into a bloody into skeleton. Into a bunch of chunks. Yeah, into a bunch of steaks. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember that blowing my mind. That was the most violent thing I'd ever seen when I was a kid. Uh, you know, somebody like grab your head and like rip your spine out with yeah. the head. Oh, great. I wonder, I wonder how many times like that you're guy's a fucking kids shrimp. Oh, that's what that guy's kids are going home to do immediately as soon as they get, <laughs> they can't watch, you know, a PG rated movie and they're going to go home and play Mortal Kombat or whatever yeah. violent video game. Oh, my God. God, those poor kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, and he's like putting them on blast on camera too. Like, explain to them why you didn't want to sit there either. And they're like have to like kind of shrug their shoulders. Like, it was demonic, I guess. And <laughs> you had a problem with the voice. We all had a problem with the voice. We all had a problem with K- the voice. Kids, now let's go home and listen to my music. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sit here in this room and listen to dad's music until your soul is clean. Yeah, we're going to bump my music in the car and I'm going to smoke a cigarette and not roll the windows down. <laughs> You've now seen me at my worst. <laughs> I've 
even going on dates with women. Oh, yeah, going yeah. on dates with women. Is love life heating up? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I met this one girl, and we were talking, and she was like, "I think it's really uh, chivalrous and romantic when a guy pays for the first date." And I was like, "Yeah, whatever." <laughs> It's kind yeah. of expected. I know. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. And we go to a place, and it was fucking not that expensive. Yeah. And then uh, we go on one date. We hang out one other time. And then she texts me like, oh, you should take me to Little Dom's, which is a, a fancy yeah. Italian restaurant. It's yeah. like, wait, hold on. Uh, <laughs> I barely know you. I'm going to take you out to like a $60 fucking <laughs> dinner. <laughs> and romance yeah. to you is just seeing what I'll buy for you. <laughs> Hit, hitting that that happy medium where it's not too much yeah. on the first date, but it's not like you're fucking taking someone to El Pollo Loco or some shit. You know, just like <laughs> something where it's like, it's got to be that perfect balance of like, it's cool. El Pollo Loco is Spanish for the sexy chicken. Oh, Ooh. that's what Loco means? <laughs> mm-hmm. I thought it was crazy. No, yeah. No. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. I just think it's weird of her to be like, it's romantic and it's chivalrous. It sounds like you just don't want to pay for dinner. That is kind of like just adhering to old. At least she's like, being up front. You know? Yeah. Well, I should be up front and be like, hey, yeah. don't base how much you like me off. Because you also know how broke I am. Yeah. yeah you it's like, is it romantic for me to not have money to you? <laughs> <laughs> Are would, you like a struggling artist? <laughs> yeah. Is that what fucking gets your rocks off? <laughs> you know, it's romantic to me not spending my last $60 that I have in the bank. <laughs> on your fucking pasta yeah uh, you know yeah. I, well you know there's no fucking, way to... what's romance to me i can't even think of it <laughs> <laughs> like honestly I, and i don't care about it like fucking blow me in a jack-in-the-box parking lot and get me a combo <laughs> for all i care <laughs> uh, well i mean what i don't know romance is like the well, uh, yeah, it's, uh, so um, other than getting blown in a jack-in-the-box parking lot, <laughs> it's like, you know, those moments when you uh, connect with someone and you, didn't, and you didn't expect to. It's not like yeah, all... Yeah, I think you're right. And you know I, don't, I, mean? I don't know if this is the right girl for me or if I didn't go in with that intention. Uh-huh. I was just like, since me and my girl, ex-girlfriend broke up not that long ago, I don't mm-hmm. think... I have the intention of like, ooh, yeah, let me get all romantic with yeah, these girls. Yeah, we make a connection with online somebody. Online dating. It's Maybe a... I'm a terrible piece of garbage <laughs> who wants to get think... his dick sucked at Jack in the Box. And... <laughs> I think it's generalizing, but I think everyone, once they get out of a long relationship, goes through that. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. To some degree. Either they like they get back out there immediately or they become like a hermit for a while. And they just get tired of being a hermit. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, I'm too yeah. cool for that. I went on a date. <laughs> I went coolest. on a date with another girl who she was like, "I'm a nerd. I love Marvel movies." And instantly in my head, I was like, "Ooh, god damn it!" And then she was like, "Yeah, me and my friends don't really drink or like we'll get together for game night." And I was like, "Oh, what board games do you play?" It's like, "Oh no, we play those games like you know how Jimmy Fallon does on his show." Oh no, where he'll like <laughs> boil eight eggs and then you smash the egg on your head and you lose if a regular egg gets smashed on your head and <laughs> do water balloon fights and Jesus <laughs> you, you, it's like you do that in your free time yeah exactly <laughs> on like Saturday night oh no I mean I guess it's better than being like me and my friends we just get fucking fucked up all the time <laughs> there was part of me that was like I kind of like I hate what she's saying but I like her attitude yeah it's like sounds very positive and happy <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as opposed to being like I like to get drunk i like to get fucking high like, yeah. <laughs> I cocaine know. sometimes cocaine i go to music festivals and i do all of them at once and <laughs> so yeah i guess that yeah but it does seem kind of silly where it's like what we'll do is is we'll paint eggs and we'll hide them around the house <laughs> it's like you do this when you're not working you'll like uh, <laughs> these orchestrate these easter egg hunts at your apartment with your friends yeah it's all I'm like where's where's the bible are you <laughs> nine of us will pretend to be zombies <laughs> nine of us will pretend to be we'll, we'll face sometimes when i've had a really hard day my friends will come over and we'll all just face paint it's and like she, reverse hide and seek she says she's just, she does stuff because out of a out of boredom and like the first day i was trying to like make plans with her she's like oh well i can't go out that night i'm taking pictures for my friend's band 
And then I can't hang out the morning after that because I'm wrapping gifts for the troops overseas. <laughs> God, I was so well, hoping you like were such saying... such a good person, though. I know. Like, Jesus. I was so hoping you were saying, I'm going to be rapping. Like, <laughs> gotta, yeah. I'm going to be battle rapping downtown. No, but <laughs> that's the thing. As soon as I heard that, I was like, Jesus Christ, like, I'm the yeah. devil compared to you. Oh, I, but it's it's not a fair comparison. You know what I mean? Like, it does make you feel like, Jesus, what kind of, like, piece of shit am I? Or it's like... That's like overly nice, too. It's yeah. like, well, I don't know. I mean, I'd like to go out when I'm not at the soup kitchen or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she said she likes to knit and like give it to fucking kids and shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Jesus. So either she's a fucking pathological liar. She is <laughs> oh, I hope one of, so. One of the best people ever. Yeah, well, I yeah. hope so. Or just, you know, how some people use their fucking. Uh, spare time to come up with devious plots or... <laughs> right right people usually lie about stuff that can't that's not quantifiable you yeah. know like they read or something they yeah. don't or something but at what point is sam gonna walk down skid row and be like hey where'd you get that knit sweater was it this girl yeah yeah, also yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> i give them with kids that have chemo that they die anyways and all their stuff gets burned in a fire and you'll never see any of it Man. what's the neil h Warren's like there's someone out there for you that <laughs> eHarmony. that's like an eHarmony.com person like someone who's like just a nice person yeah who would like deserve someone who is on the same page as uh-huh. them so they can like just do good in the world yeah. It's like, get out of Tinder. We're all trying to fuck here, okay? (laughs) Asked her on a second date. Did not respond. Ooh. Um, Oh, boy. She ain't that good. We made out hardcore at the end of the first date. Uh Uh-huh. I don't know. (laughs) This is is a good direction for the podcast. (laughs) Hey, man. No, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. Don't judge me. I'm not. I I went out with a girl... Who she asked to see a video of my stand up. Oh yeah. And like I I was like, I just forgot what I talk about in stand up, which is like my history of drug abuse and depravity. <laughs> so um we went out on a date and like three seconds into the date she was like so you used to do heroin (laughs) (laughs) and that pretty much i think ruined the date right off the bat for me but but what if someone like heard that about you and then was immediately (laughs) i mean like what if someone heard that about you and then was immediately like that's cool that you can express that someone out there listening at slam harder you know what i mean (laughs) Well, I mean, it's like, at least you knew immediately. You know what I mean? Like, you didn't have to, like, bide your time to be like, uh, when do I reveal all this I know. Stuff? Well, when I was on the date with the fucking rap, the gifts to the troops girl, I was like, <laughs> when do I have to tell her I fucking used to smoke heroin? Because <laughs> I got to tell her at some point if this keeps going. Oh, uh, I know. You're just like, God, you got to give me some dirt now. Like, what's yeah. something you can't have just led this puritanical life? Like, what you must have done something wrong? Yeah. Uh, oh it's God. such a mess for me. <laughs> well, well, she also the girl who knew I do heroin. I do this joke, and it's not even a real joke. It's based off something my friend did. I just make it about me. It's about my two roommates and about how I accidentally Roku porn to their TV. <laughs> how do you do that? <laughs> Because Google it, Play, it's or really easy to hit the wrong button. Chromecast, one, cl- or one click, and you're there. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I'm and, so glad I don't fuck with that shit. <laughs> and uh, so the joke is that you, yeah, I accidentally do that and ruin Bachelor Night, and <laughs> and then they're gonna be really weirded out when they see it's a porn called "Guy Has Sex with His Roommate." <laughs> <laughs> So from time to time, we do have a uh, mysterious newspaper that arrives here at the studio, and it's called the Disgraceland Picayune, and today we've got a uh, supersized edition. We'll start with this story. This is from uh, Polk County, Florida. We always start in Florida or at a Waffle House. That's tradition with this newspaper. Mm -hmm. Uh, So Polk County, Florida. Last week, a sheriff's lieutenant saw 48-year-old Andy Sigears unsteadily riding a Segway in the middle lane, swerving and impeding traffic. 
This traffic violation occurred just outside a sheriff's substation on Dunstan Road. So they didn't actually have to pull him over. They just walked outside, and this guy was uh, was driving in the middle of the street Segways, on the Segway. <laughs> Segways still exist? Oh, yeah. Well, in Florida, yeah. I think they're just that's where they all went when Segway kind of uh, fizzled out. They just yeah. shipped them all to retirees they, in they, Florida. They've been shamed ever since their inception. People are like, yeah. this is stupid. Like, it, immediately. Yeah. Well, and now everybody's doing the, the goddamn bird scooters, which is mm. not that much different. Yeah. Uh, uh, the lieutenant said that there were clues that Sigurds was intoxicated. He slurred his speech. He smelled of alcohol and he had watery eyes. But the most incriminating factor was that Sigurds told the lieutenant he had consumed two bottles of wine. Uh, so <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't nothing. <laughs> well, he was he was, two bottles. He was arrested and taken to the Polk County Jail, where he his breath samples uh, resulted in a point two four, which is three times the legal limit. So yeah, he uh, he probably had more than two. Yeah, he probably had a little mm. bit more than two. That's the, one of those things where you try to say two beers when you get pulled over. Right. Oh, I just had mm-hmm. two drinks. But, and then, but he fucked up. It was like, oh, I just had two bottles. <laughs> yeah, and it was really like four bottles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. You ever seen someone on two bottles of wine? I'm sure you have, but yeah, probably. <laughs> and as the kids say. You know, when the kids say this hit different, <laughs> yeah, wine hit different. Oh, you, you know, hit, like it's it, uh, wine drunk is a different. Oh, I call it's it. It's more potent. It's yeah, fifteen like percent. Oh, so. I call yeah. it, I call it like the warm head. Like your whole head just feels very yeah. warm and like kind of warm. Oh yeah, <laughs> You're like yeah. One time, this this girl came to the bar I used to work at, and she did the whole thing where she just kind of like composed herself before she ordered a drink. <laughs> And she was like, oh, one alcohol, please. <laughs> and uh, took one sip and was just flat out on her face. Oh, Jesus. Like, on the bar. And, like, she had to leave and shit. And I, like, chased her out into the parking lot and stuff. Like, she was trying to leave. And I was like, please don't drive. Like, all this shit. And, like, yeah. her boyfriend had to come pick her up and all this stuff. It was crazy. And she left her a seat. And she had eaten, like, uh, <laughs> she had eaten a thing of cheese sticks and had two whole bottles of wine to her. Oh, herself. shit. She was having a night. I guess it's a, uh, a size thing, too, because she was not a, a big person. Yeah. So it's like she would look. She was just fucked up. So in this scenario, you have to be pulled over. At the end of the story, you do get pulled over and you get arrested for DUI. What is the funniest vehicle to be pulled over on? <laughs> Hovercraft. Oh. Hovercraft is good. Because if you're on the if you're on the overcraft, you should be like, I wasn't technically touching the road, officer. <laughs> yeah, I made a left turn. I thought this yeah. was the ocean. <laughs> I wasn't driving, sir. Yeah. I was a floating. I think you need to get uh, an opinion from NASA on this <laughs> one, <laughs> sir. <laughs> sir, respectfully, you can uh, fuck yourself. Uh, uh, you're, uh, you're a ground police. I'm gonna require an air marshal to pull me over, sir. I believe this is in the jurisdiction of the Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> so you get fucking. T- Tom Cruise in here, Maverick, mm-hmm. and he can fucking pull me over. <laughs> I don't think does, I'm fucking floating on a tire, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think it is? Uh, what the oh blimp or police car? Ooh, oh blimp. <laughs> Yeah. Where you're trying to make an escape. Yeah. Oh, best thing to get a DUI in is when you're actually rolling downhill inside of a tire. <laughs> <laughs> and they pull over the tire. Yeah, like they stop they somehow stop the tire. Yeah. Oh, I, I was Oh look, he's drunk. He's threw up. He's <laughs> definitely drunk. <laughs> I'm just dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would say one of them uh like penny farthing bicycles or like a old like velocipede, you know, one oh, of them. Oh yeah, one you of mean them like those Victorian twenties r- like ridiculous bikes. <laughs> yeah, with the huge wheel and the tiny wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Miniature horse. Ooh, Miniature. Oh, Ooh. a Shetland pony. Yeah. You're like a big like it's like me. It's like can a fat you, guy on a Shetland pony. <laughs> can you get DUIs on horseback? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, look that up. Man. Yeah. No, <laughs> you can cuz I uh, somebody in Austin has got one before. Really? And they tried to use the defense that the horse knew how to get home. So <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I wonder if you can get a speeding ticket on a horse oh uh yeah uh, Ulys- absolutely ulysses s grant got many speeding tickets on his horse while he was the president for just like riding like a fucking maniac through washington god damn yeah <laughs> it's like a regular occurrence yeah. <laughs> speaking of getaway driving pinellas park florida Around 11 p.m. last Friday night, 24-year-old Katie Lamont of California walked into an Exxon gas station three miles away from a vacation home she was reportedly staying in. The young woman asked the gas station clerk to view a $42 jewel vape pen she was interested in buying. And that's when Lamont booked it out of the convenience store and made a dash for a waiting lift car she hoped to use as a getaway. 
Okay. Oh, well. uh, unfortunately for her, the driver wanted no part in the great vape heist and refused to drive her home. Lamont decided to go to plan B and ordered an Uber van as a backup car before she began walking away from the scene. Meanwhile, the gas station clerk called local authorities and reported the stolen jewel. When authorities from the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office arrived, they found Lamont inside the Uber at a location adjacent to the gas station. I think the moral <laughs> of the story is... is it's hard to quit smoking. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard. Everybody I know who switches to the e nicotine just hits it more often. Like, yeah, more than a cigarette because it's just all day long. They can do it inside. I saw a dude hit a vape on the bus the other day. They mm-hmm. just have no sort of <laughs> idea for where it's right or wrong. <laughs> I, th- I think I like the ritual, too, of like going outside to smoke a cigarette. You get like a minute away from the conversation, I guess. <laughs> Look at the street <laughs> <laughs> by yourself. I love it. I, seriously, <laughs> I really do. Like, I really like I don't know. I just get overwhelmed in social situations. And I like to just go outside and smoke a cigarette for a second yeah. and like look at the street. But I guess it's it would be even weirder if I just went outside and just like put my hands in my pockets like <laughs> Oh yeah. I was like staring at the street, you know. I, like, I do that. So I was yeah. gonna say I don't yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, but it's like like it gives you some sort of like excuse to do that from smoking. <laughs> yeah, but so yeah, when you're people scared. You're scared to look like a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I always have been. Uh but I just like the detail that she hired a, a Lyft as the getaway driver. And oh, yeah. They're not going to have that shit. Just no. run, dummy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, run uh, away. Uh, somebody who's stealing a $42 jewel ain't going to tip you. No. <laughs> yeah. Also, a Lyft and an Uber are probably going to be about $42. <laughs> like, you're, you're about to break even on this crime. There's a whole 15 minute period where that Lyft driver's in the car being like, man, fuck this shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like that he refused to take her anywhere. Like, he saw the, the shit go down and was like, mm, fuck you. I mean, I think most Lyft drivers would do the same thing with most crimes. Like, if somebody yeah. called a Lyft and they're just like covered in blood, they're just yeah. like, yeah, I need to get out of here right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. What I am I? Kamel Nanjiani Stuber? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> we are sponsored by the film Stuber. <laughs> this, yeah. What if we're still sponsored by Stuber like years after it's it's been out? I mean, you know. <sighs> it's 2025. The podcast is still <laughs> and, brought uh, to you by Stuber. I think this this whole story is sponsored by Vape because they're like, <laughs> either that woman was on something else. Oh, you, definitely. You know, she's definitely on something yeah, else. She's oh. like, I need a fucking vape. Or oh, she's yeah. Like, she's on nothing but, like, but just needed a vape. So she's willing to steal it. Right. Well, and the other thing that's funny is, like, it's a $42 vape. Just buy a $10 pack of cigarettes instead. Like, you know what I mean? I'm mm-hmm. trying to quit. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying, trying to quit. quit and go to jail. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> so uh, this is from Loxley, Alabama. A man was airlifted to a local hospital after being run over by his own four wheeler operated by his dog. On Highway 59 in Loxley, Thursday around noon, authorities told WKRG, a mobile affiliate, that the man had tied his dog to the four-wheeler uh, near the Bunny Bread outlet, <laughs> and the dog tried to run off, pushing the throttle and causing the four-wheeler to hit the man and run him over. The man is reported to be in stable condition. There were no injuries to the dog. It's like, you know the people <laughs> at... Like, who had to cover that story? Turn the fucking four-wheeler off when you go in Blue Bunny Bread Company. Oh, keep the dog inside. Like, you know, fucking lay off the the, the crap pipe. Like, all the shit. But it's like, <laughs> the people that cover that story, like, they went to college to be journalists, <laughs> and they have to fucking go cover this shit yeah. for, like, ten years. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, if you live down in Mobile, that is... This yeah. is the redneck version of having like a small dog you keep in a purse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like I'm gonna bring my pit bull to the fuck with an ATV. I to taught the, him how to <laughs> drive it. Bread store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where they're at. Is the bread store? Because that's the other funny thing. Is like you first read about it, you're like, wait, are they like in the woods? Is he hunting? No, they went to the bread outlet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did the bread out. I get them discount snowballs with the cocoa nuts and the schmallows. You guys never had a bread store? Oh, we had a bread no. store. Yeah, Dolly Madison, man. I probably wasn't paying attention. I'm sure we did. Oh, <laughs> yeah. My mom would take us to the bread store. The bread right. store rules. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. You can, you can smell it, too, if it's like next to an actual bakery when you're driving around in the morning. Whew. I feel cheated. Good smells. Mm. They, they got one out here. We'll, we'll take you to one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we'll do it. <laughs> Here, Carter, imagine a store that only yeah. sells bread and snack cakes. 
now tell me something that actually exists because <laughs> that <laughs> sounds like paradise. <laughs> <laughs> I love Brad. <laughs> That's what my vanity plate says on my Honda Civic. I love Brad. Mine my, says ice queen. <laughs> ice queen. Ice queen. My favorite thing about the... Have you noticed... Last night there was a fatal shooting at ice queen. Ice queen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Columbus, Ohio. This is this is fucking wild. A mother was horrified last week after waking up and finding a strange woman trying to give her two year old son a bath. That's I've never, so scary. <laughs> I've, I know. Quote: I've never heard anything like this. Aricia Hill told NBC4. Hill said that she woke up to the sound of her dog barking and went to see what was happening. Quote. I get up and I walk to my door and I can see down the hall. I see a white female woman bent over with my two year old in the tub. I like that she calls her a white female woman. It is a bit redundant. <laughs> As if yeah. you, she was a, a bear. Right, uh, right. <laughs> uh, Hill in the home intruder. <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's like it's just you can just say woman, you idiot, <laughs> dumbass. You, whoa, whoa, no, oh, what are you still traumatized because some <laughs> stranger son bathed was... your kid? <laughs> Jesus, get over it. Hill and the home intruder identified as Elizabeth Hickson, 22, briefly scuffled before Hill and her boyfriend were able to subdue Hickson and hold her in place until the police arrived. Hickson was arrested and charged with burglary. Hickson's mother told NBC that Hickson had good intentions and meant no harm the fuck does that mean that's even f- more frightening <laughs> prosecutors will determine How is burglary what t- burglary the only thing too I, yeah, yeah. yeah touching a naked naked child like yeah breaking and entering like it's like a legal loophole <laughs> yeah. she knows the law i'll tell you you can break in and you can bathe a child but <laughs> i'll tell you she knows it. the perfect crime yeah like the lawyer's like he's like he like smacks his head against like the wall he's just like she knows that <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be able to make this stick. <laughs> She's running circles around me in court. Ah, <laughs> uh, the old bay the child <laughs> angle. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. that one's uh, that one was was very very fucking weird to me and the woman looks like she's in a cult too like in the in, in the that's like uh, some shit from the shining i just wanted him to be clean i walked by the house and i smelt a bad smell <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ that's a crisis averted right there oh well, all we can get him for is burglary <laughs> i think she took a napkin or two on the way out or something that's burglary we can't get anything to stick <laughs> we can't get her on baby drowning because she didn't yeah. go that far yet <laughs> The way the law is written, there's no such law against drowning a baby. <laughs> there's if you're also, attempting to clean it, then, you know. There's also no law that says a dog can't play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> the law is... Uh, Air Bud 6, <laughs> midnight bathing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dog that's barking is the Air Bud. <laughs> That is, that is, we should have done that on the Halloween episode. Hush now, clean, clean, clean. <laughs> so clean. What? I just wanted to clean him. And now he's, she's Michael Jackson now. I just wanted to clean him. <laughs> <laughs> Blankets dirty. <laughs> That's very uh, back, sorry. <laughs> uh, we got some international news here. This is from Linz, Austria. Mm. Uh, a 58 year old Austrian woman received quite a surprise one morning when a parcel that was supposed to contain dresses bought online from a retailer in the Netherlands turned out to contain 25,000 ecstasy pills. <laughs> That's what Score. you say when the cops show up looking for your stash. <laughs> oh, she, she thought I was getting dresses. She, nar- <laughs> she narked on herself. Uh, yeah, you have to, because sometimes the cops know it's coming. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then you're like, whoopsie. Ooh, yeah, don't, yeah. don't raid my house. I didn't even think about that angle. Look, I know some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Initially, yeah, someone sent me 9,992 9, 9, ecstasy pills. <laughs> Gotta sell a couple. You know? yeah. uh, initially, the unnamed woman mistook the purple pills for decorative stones, uh, police said, but on closer inspection, her husband realized that they were probably stimulants and returned the package to their local post office. Say it's ecstasy. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're Austrian. Oh, they're Austrian. Oh. It's Austrian. That's that wife. This is ecstasy. <laughs> das ist ecstasy. Das ist ecstasy. Uh, <laughs> the ecstasy tablets uh, were intended for Scotland. Uh, the original planned cozy breakfast was quickly over, and the horror of the couple, it turned out that, uh, let's see, uh, the one of the packages did contain the two dresses. The second, however, had 25,000 ecstasy tablets worth, worth about uh, 585,000 US dollars, said a statement from Upper Austria Police. Uh, the post office was equally astonished, which is why the police and subsequently the narcotics department of the city uh, was informed. According to Austrian police, the 24,000, the, the pills were worth, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. that's. Oi. <laughs> so so she's immediately gave it up. Not even try yeah. to 
They even sampled the merchandise. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> she knew her house was... Un- Look, she knew her house was under watch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They intercepted the package before <laughs> it even got to her. Yeah. But you can't... She'd had a fucking you, helicopter following her all day. You can't <laughs> yeah. get them if you just found it addressed to them. Yeah. But if they watch you, watch your house, w- deliver the package, you take it in, mm-hmm. and then you have it in there for a couple hours, they're going to go get that warrant and bust your ass. <laughs> That's why you mm. immediately call the cops and they're like, I didn't order this package. To, uh, yeah. <laughs> I did not order 25,000 ecstasy. Though. I assure you. Because we've all been there. We know how tempting it is to immediately take 24, 25,000. 25, yeah. yeah. <laughs> take them all at once. That's She exercised restraint. I, that's respect. Yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, this one's from Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, hackers uploaded a pornographic video which screened, right. <laughs> which, screened right. Fuck yeah. which screened on an ASICS uh, Central Auckland screen to shocked shoppers and pedestrians early Sunday morning. So you know those dumbass shoes, ASICS? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this is their like big corporate store, I guess, it, in it, Auckland. It wasn't like like it didn't like just drop in the foreplay. I mean, it's like one second you're looking at someone wearing shoes, next second butt fucking. I mean, well, I think it's just the butt fucking because it's it's just a big screen that usually just shows on a loop. I guess people running and people doing things in these ASIC yeah. shoes, and then these hackers sitting on there. What if the people butt fucking were wearing ASIC shoes? <laughs> <laughs> just feels better. <laughs> There's a guerrilla marketing thing where they're like, if people complain, then we have this whole story. Staff at the Shortland Street store confirmed the hacking, but they said they could not make any further comments about how the inappropriate content appeared on the large screen above the shop entrance. Dwayne Hinegano, a security officer who witnessed the screening, said that an explicit sex video, which ran for nearly two hours, was seen by shocked yeah, passers-by when ran they, for two hours? They walked by the retail sports store. I can't get it to, to stop! Like, <laughs> like Fumbling over the thing. There, how can they not just unplug it? Or something? Well, so yeah. that's the thing. They did it early in the morning and the shop didn't open until 10 and they Uh-oh. started it supposedly, well, According to the security guy, it started at eight, but there are actually witnesses who claim that it was going on like at one a.m. Like oh, they just okay. it had just been running all night. Basically, it's not something anyone who comes to Queen Street early on Sunday morning would expect. <laughs> so they no, bet not. <laughs> Uh, quote, uh, the video ran for a long time, maybe two hours until eight, <laughs> from eight a.m. until the shop staff arrived. <laughs> about ten a.m., some were shocked, but others stopped and watched. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they were also shocked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so some people were just kind of like, eh. <laughs> Another Pretty window- vanilla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fairly yeah. vanilla, if you ask me. <laughs> Uh, another witness, yeah, like I said, uh, it said that the display had been running as early as 1 a.m. Uh, Tanya Lee, 29, was on her way to breakfast with her seven-year-old son when they looked up and Ooh. noticed the video. Quote, what does the world come to? Why would she even <laughs> w- agree to be in this article? <laughs> yes, my seven-year-old son. And I want my, I want inadvertently exposed him to pornography. I want my first and last name in print. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, when you see your shot for glory, you got to take it. I took quote. I took a second look because I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. Mm. Uh, it's totally inappropriate and offensive. Not something you want kids exposed to, and it's also embarrassing for Auckland as a tourist destination. I yeah. took a second look. That's all I take out of that. <laughs> <laughs> look, I may have looked two or three times just to make sure. I thought. <laughs> The first time, dick and balls. Second time, blowjob. Third time, ooh, I knew it was porno. Yeah, Dude. yeah. I, so that's when you know. You know, they're they're a little bit behind the times there, and I don't think they have the the trope yet of the you know white lady. May I speak to your manager, person? Because this is totally what she says. Lee said she expected no less than an apology and an investigation from A6 Shoes to make sure it didn't happen again. An investigation, you say. What the fuck are they supposed to do? Some fucking, you know, <laughs> curly... Hire the, the, the greatest detective in the world. Yeah, Batman. Batman. <laughs> <laughs> She's acting like it's a fucking inside job or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Like, dude, some Croatian teenager was just having fun because somebody left a fucking uh, a one off of the code that does the screen and they were able to just break into it. I, they have those uh, those street signs on the street, you know, yeah. that, that uh, light up different stuff when they're closing a road or something. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I was driving by one. One, one time this was down in uh, like Marina del Rey and somebody had programmed it to say stinky poop ahead <laughs> so you know this nice. ain't the hard Apparently, this ain't yeah. fucking rocket science those aren't that hard to hack I've heard yeah <laughs> so this can't be much harder uh-huh. to get the sign above the fucking yeah. ASIC store it's not like there's a fucking this huge firewall in front of the screen <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
I still don't understand. So it had been playing since one in the morning, and like they were like opening and shit, and they're just like, uh, oh, fuck it. And like they're just like, you know. Well, they probably couldn't hear it because usually those are just giant. Oh, yeah, like, it was just silent, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, right. It was probably just playing, and yeah, she just kind of noticed it going on. Uh, that, what kind was, of porn that, do you think that, it was? Fucking, well, white chicks, black dicks. I mean, it's all, yeah, uh, it's New Zealand, so that's a fair, that's a fair assumption. Maybe Maori or something. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate gazongas. <laughs> <laughs> it was a porn I bought once. <laughs> you bought? Yeah, fucking, I bought it. Chocolate gazongas. <laughs> I, awesome. I used to work in that sandwich shop we spoke about. Oh before. yeah, sure, yeah. Two doors down was a gay porn store. Oh mm-hmm. wow! And what uh, was the name of that store? I don't remember. Some chocolate oh, no, gazongas. It, it was over the rainbow. Oh, okay. okay, okay, and um. So sometimes they would come in and be like, hey, you got a couple rolls of quarters or, you know, we would do that sometimes. We're friends with them. Yeah. And uh, one day they had come in just for lunch and they were like, hey, they're real like, like they're about to tell me something slick secret. And they're like, hey, (laughs) we got shipped a box of straight porn on accident. (laughs) (laughs) Do you want to? We'll sell it to you for cheap if you want to come buy it. (laughs) Cheap, you say? Yeah. And I was like, I I had never purchased porn at this point. Mm-hmm, I yeah. just, you know, mm-hmm. found it online for free. Right, right. Why would you? <laughs> so I go into the gay porn store. Then that's the store you go into. True. And there's just like six foot tall erect cock paintings on the mm-hmm. wall. <laughs> st- studded cock rings just all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Big old dicks just everywhere. <laughs> and um, so they tell you... They go, okay, it's back here. And they lead me behind like <laughs> two curtains. Uh-huh. And then they pull me to this like su- another back room. <laughs> and then the, to this tiny shelf that is again covered by a small curtain. Uh-huh. It's like they were so ashamed for the straight porn to even be <laughs> in the building. <laughs> and so I opened it up and I was looking through it. And they were all terrible. All the porn. Yeah. It was just terrible straight This, this was meant for like the Walmart bin in the middle where yeah. they're all six bucks. Yeah, shit. exactly. Yeah. Just the pile of porn that yeah. nobody fucking cares. Yeah. But at that point... These I was, aren't headliners we're talking yeah. about here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so at one point yeah. I was just like, I felt too bad just to say, ah, I don't want any of this fucking gnarly porn. <laughs> So I just picked up chocolate okay. gazongas, which is so weird. <laughs> so it's just an episode of Ripley's Believe It or Not. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Guinness World Records yeah. breaking titties. I can't this. I can't get into this because I'm just thinking about this woman's awful back problems. Yeah, it was oh just crazy. God. It was just nuts. <laughs> I, I, th- that was the, one of the only porns I've ever bought in porn videos. So you say porns? You know what I'm talking about. Pornos. <laughs> Pornos. The only porn I was ever bought, it was a discounted one. Yeah, of course. And, and he's going to spend like, yeah, it cost gonna, a lot of money. Like 80 fucking bucks yeah. for a <laughs> DVD. But uh, this was like a $15 <laughs> DVD. And it was called Maximum Boobs. <laughs> <laughs> and I hid that thing in my closet. Oh, dude, I'd have that right on the shelf. <laughs> for 15 years almost. Oh, wait, how old are you when this no, was No, wait, no, on? I'm 32. That's not, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> so, like, I, probably like five years, uh, okay. I hid it in my closet. And then when I was uh, moving to Nashville, I forgot I still had it. And, um, and I must have thrown it back in the closet. And before I moved out of the L.A., I saw it again, my copy of Maximum Boobs. <laughs> and you never watched it? Oh, of course I watched it. Yeah, I've, I've seen it eight million times. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. maximum amount of times. Oh, yeah. I've seen it a, a bunch of times. But it's like it <laughs> followed me from like three states. This fucking <laughs> low rent porn called Maximum Boobs. Man, there must have been hun- some hot stuff in there. <laughs> Not even really. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it was fine. It was. It wasn't You're like just a fucking penny pincher. <laughs> like, well, this was like after like Pornhub. Like, I mean, it's after like porn got Spotified and shit, and yeah. it's free essentially. <laughs> so it's like, you know, like I don't know. I think it was some sort of like complex of like. I bought this piece of pornography. Yeah. And you were, you were kind of dirty because I bought it. You were horny for savings. Yeah. Yeah. Or I, I don't know. I was like horny for the act of like, I bought this because I You were horny dirty. for consumerism. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I don't know. I threw it away before I moved to LA, though. Damn. So I don't have maximum boobs anymore. Maybe we could look it up. I'm sure you could. I mean, it's got, it's got some names in it. Yeah. 
Rivers, <laughs> drop a link to that. On yeah, the we'll put it on the Twitter. If we find maximum boobs, we'll put it on there. It's a hustler video sensation. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, okay, hustler. Oh, they make good uh, stuff. Oh yeah, high quality production value. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I lugged that thing in my heart for five years, and you know, sometimes you just gotta just free your heart. Hey, you know? listen. If you love something, let it go. And if it comes back. Maximum boobs. Mm -hmm. And that's why I took a copy of Maximum Boobs without the case. I threw the case out earlier in my life to avoid getting caught. <laughs> and I Did put, you just have it in a, like, a, one of those? I had it in a StarCraft ones. jewel case. Yeah. <laughs> hell yeah, and then I took that StarCraft jewel case with Maximum Boobs in it, and I donated it to charity. <laughs> no, <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> I took all of my shit in a trash bag and threw it. <laughs> oh, my God. There's some woman <laughs> demanding that a Goodwill be shut down because their <laughs> kid got, oh, she, oh, my boy wanted was StarCraft, and now he's got maximum boobs. I, I, like, threw it at the back of a truck, and I was like, at first I felt good because I had donated my shit to charity. And then, and I was then like, you're like, oh, wait. No, oh, no. Fuck. Oh, no. And then, but I had already gotten a few miles away. I was like, yeah. <laughs> would you would you have gone back and told him that seems yeah i would that have seems more embarrassing yeah i was just hey, like uh, i accidentally uh gave away uh, uh there's a porno. game that i really uh enjoy in there uh starcraft it was Dude. a very g a good game uh <laughs> goodwill workers have 100 percent heard that story before though yeah 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 100 percent that has happened i before. think it was more me being lazy than me being like ashamed oh, okay. i was just like you know what because I'm like a pack rat. I was like, yeah. you know, I just broke with the past, <laughs> and this is my new life now. <laughs> I don't need maximum boobs I don't anymore. need maximum boobs. All I'm I need... better than maximum boobs. <laughs> yeah, all I need is my fucking, you know, my TV and the, my car <laughs> <laughs> and the, the open road. <laughs> and now that I moved here, yeah, I miss. I wish I still had maximum boobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all do. Uh, <laughs> we got a, a couple more here. This one's from Islamabad, Pakistan. The caretaker of a Pakistani house of worship unleashed his pet lion on an electrician who was trying to collect a late payment. Uh, <laughs> he has a pet lion? He has a pet lion. Okay. It, the incident happened in an area of Punjab province called Shadra in early September, local police told CNN. Police said the electrician visited the house of worship multiple times because his wages were overdue and eventually got into a heated debate with the caretaker who then used his pet lion to attack the man real lion what did the electrician do again uh so this guy wouldn't pay him and the electrician came over and was like give me my money you owe me motherfucker and he unleashed a lion upon him that's fucking ballsy of the electrician to be like no <laughs> i don't give a fuck if you have a he lion he had to have known the guy had a lion yeah <laughs> lion, you hear it if, if you've been to the zoo <laughs> when lions yawn they're like yeah, and roar. they they smell like super duper cat piss it smells like outside of our apartment <laughs> <laughs> it smells like piss really yeah. hard uh author <laughs> authorities said that the victim did not initially file a police report because the caretaker promised to give him treatment and pay him compensation so he didn't mm. file a police report because the guy was like dude listen i know we got off to a rough start yesterday <laughs> sure i'm sorry i unleashed the king of the jungle upon you <laughs> yeah you, you made me do this. you made me yeah. do this bro. i don't want to do it bro but i'll pay your medical bills bro <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you could just see it in your heart to not sue me for uh sicking a lion on you <laughs> God, like, that's fair bro that's fair <laughs> that's cool and it, literally that's what happened a month passed you settle for that a month passed and the caretaker received uh, uh neither medical bill treatment or his original compensation and uh so he decided to file a police report the caretaker has since been arrested police did not say whether the man had a license to own a pet lion or if the lion was still being cared for by the individual or if it had been moved to a zoo oh, uh, good you can get a license for that yeah yeah apparently yeah. well in pakistan you know they got they got bigger shit to worry about i think uh, yeah <laughs> than yeah. like an impending uh, uh war with india they, they, you can have a lion why not it's uh you know you hate to see it yeah, you hate to see it. Uh, this is the last one I've got. Uh, a man who lived on a bus bench outside pop star Harry Styles' house for several months has been found guilty of stalking the former One Direction star. Mm. Harry Styles told Hendon Magistrate Court that he was left feeling, quote, scared and very uncomfortable after being stalked by Pablo Tarazaga Orrero, who he, quote, felt sorry for. The former One Direction star said he offered to buy Arrero 26 food or a hotel room after he found the man sleeping in a bus stop outside of his London home. It is alleged that Arrero then posted notes and requests for money through the musician's letterbox and followed him to the pub several times. 
Styles says that he subsequently went to the police after the defendant's erratic and frightening behavior left him scared. Speaking from behind a screen at Hinden Magistrate Court today, Styles said Pablo was sleeping outside of my residence and I first became aware of him in March. I thought it was sad that someone so young was sleeping rough at a bus stop when it was cold. Oh, yeah. It seems that he's fucking, yeah, making up now. It's like, I just thought it was sad, you know? Yeah. <laughs> just want to be a good person. <laughs> someone get him away from me. You know, yeah, he's just freaked out. And he's <laughs> playing catch up. But I love Herrero's response, so. Uh, after stopping contact with the man at the advice of his security team styles st- st- so the security team is like hey man fucking don't don't fucking talk to the guy on the bus stop quit being nice to this yeah, bum quit being nice yeah. to this guy uh, styles claims he still continued to see Herrero quote incredibly often and added that it was almost every day the prosecution meanwhile argued that Herrero's stalking continued to have a significant effect on styles day to day life after attempting to cut ties, Styles reportedly saw him nearly every day and received notes and money letters, money in his letterbox. So the guy's like putting money in the letter. It's it's really he's bizarre. Almost like he's putting money in Harry Styles, in like- Harry Styles' letterbox, which or mailbox, which is fucking strange. And the guy, the guy's homeless. Yeah, uh, but th- this is this is why I pulled this article because this cracks my shit up. When asked whether he had stalked the celebrity, Herrero said, "Quote: That was never my intention. In the end, I just wanted the money he offered me." And then at the end, he goes, I do not have any feelings for him. I'm definitely not in love with him. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, to definitely. To have to make that fucking clear in a court is awesome. <sighs> no homo. Yeah, he literally yeah. went hashtag no homo at the end of his fucking testimony. <laughs> I'm not in love with him or anything. We totally didn't kiss. I'm, I'm not crazy about him. <laughs> Yeah. I don't think about him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what you're implying. I can't stop thinking. It's not like I can't stop thinking about his, his Carhartt beanie and his floppy hair. <laughs> I'm not in love with him. You're in love with him. You're in love with him. Oh, can't you see? You belong to me. I'm a fool for X. Every step you take. Every move you make. Sam, where can people find you on the internet? At Slam Harder on Twitter. LA Comedy Life on YouTube. Carter, what about you? Uh, Dr. Clark on Instagram. Carter Glasscock on Twitter. And I'm on Facebook, too. Oh, boy. Yes, definitely uh, definitely follow Carter and Sam on all forms of social media there. Rivers, where can people find you on the yeah, internet? Thank you for asking, Sam. You can find yeah. me on Twitter and Instagram at Rivers Langley. And if you're listening to this on the day it comes out, uh, come see me on Sunday night. I'm going to be in Auburn, Alabama, doing a show with uh, past guests of the show, John Michael Bond and John O'Zalay, uh, as well as uh, also past guests of the show, Wes Van Horn and uh, my friend Paige McBride. Uh. Uh, so we're having a good old uh, Auburn comedy podcast party on october 27th at the hound uh, it's gonna okay, be at the man. coffee cat at the hound so uh come on down to that uh the night before that the 26th i'm gonna be opening up a uh, burlesque show that is the uh trim tab halloween party tricker tees uh saturday october 26th at the trim tab brewing company that's uh 2721 fifth avenue south in birmingham alabama so come out and see me and i believe that event is being hosted by uh, carter and i's uh, mutual good friend tolly jones Oh, uh, Tolly going to be hosting that one. He gets in your marrow and he seeps in your bones. It's Tolly Tolly, Tolly Jones. Tolly Tolly Jones, baby. So, yeah, I got a lot of fun comedy stuff coming up this weekend in uh, in Alabama. And uh, That's next. That's lit. Yeah. That's ba- lit. That's fucking lit. Bama's fam. lit, dude. I'm going to try to come to uh, Atlanta on the 28th. Yeah, so I'm going to be all over. Look at, Find me on Twitter and Instagram. Super and lit. And uh, next Tuesday, we have our very special halloween episode Ooh. starring uh, brandy posey that all, all three of us were uh, were in that and i i mean legitimately one of the funniest conversations i've ever been in the room for we were all dying by the end because we'd eaten too much uh cheese it uh stuffed crust pizza oh yeah Ugh. it was fucking wild every time i remember that i'm disgusted <laughs> yeah but it made us <laughs> so loose man it was it was so funny mm-hmm. just uh suppressing anyway. farts has that effect <laughs> yeah yeah you yeah, know <laughs> uh but yeah so we got our uh halloween episode coming out on the 29th on the 5th of November, remember, remember, the 5th of November, we got a very special episode all about the movie Bloodsport. And uh, that episode is going to also contain a very, very exciting announcement. 
So everybody on uh, November 5th, go watch Blood Sports. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. It's really fucking hard to find. <laughs> it's like yeah. way harder. So just go find some like weird Russian, you know, Blood YouTube, YouTube bullshit and then go watch Blood Sports. I'll give everyone my YouTube password. I bought it. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> just ask. Yeah. Tweet at Carter underscore Glasscock and he'll give you the I'll YouTube you password. The dates, man. Oh, boy. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to watch Blood Sport and then we got a really, really exciting special announcement uh, coming on uh, November. November the 5th. So that's uh, that's what we got to look forward to. Uh, find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash the goods pod. We're on Twitter at the goods pod. Every episode ever, youtube.com slash the goods pod. Big shout out to our friend Richard Eden up there in the Klondike doing the hard work at the goods pod.com and the brain freeze podcast network. Buy a shirt, pro wrestling tees.com slash the goods pod. And uh, the best way to help out this show, go to Apple Podcasts, rate, review, and subscribe. And doing all that shows the attitude of gratitude. And if you don't have the attitude, of gratitude. I'm going to unleash a lion on you. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. When the burning sun goes down, when the dark night is clear, I wait for you, girl, when no one is near. Come again for you, girl. To You left town this morning On that old black train was mixed edited and distributed by me rivers langley you can find the show on twitter at the goods pod our theme song was composed by dj smiles check him out on twitter at dj smiles this was a brain freeze podcast <laughs>